train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. While the recent slew of strikes that befell Sodor were a very unpleasant experience, they did highlight the fact that the infrastructure at Brendam Docks was insufficient to handle heavy periods of shipping. To ensure his engines were never again buried by so much work, Mr. Zorro organized for an upgrade of the harbor. On the western side of the docks, extra berths and sidings were added, as were a number of new warehouses. On the eastern side, a dedicated passenger terminal was built for visiting cruise liners, which boasted its own station. This was probably the most important component of the project, as much of the quay side was now free to exclusively handle cargo ships, and the installation of extra cranes meant that goods could be loaded and unloaded at a much faster rate. To their credit, the Middies did an excellent job in upgrading their home base. Their efforts dramatically increased the docks overall efficiency, allowing them to handle their workload better. As an added bonus, we no longer were tasked to help them, which was something we all found very, very agreeable. So I arrived at Wellsworth to drop off my trucks. The second I shunt them, Thomas and Percy start laying into me. What'd they say? Among other things, that we're a pack of lazy gits who wouldn't know what hard work was if it rolled up and bumped us in the bunker. Kept on saying that if we were proper engines, we wouldn't have needed their help to begin with. And what did you say? I reminded them that the only reason we needed their help was because their boys at Knapford were the ones who went on strike. After that, they belted right up. <laughs> nice one. Kuh. I tell you what, it's great we don't need their help around here anymore. I'm with you, Diesel. I almost choked on the air of snobbery that accompanied them. I was one happy lady when they rolled out of here for the last time. I'm surprised to hear you say that, Lily. Why? I saw you chatting to Gordon on more than a few occasions, and you were always smiling around him. I couldn't help but notice a few grins on his part, too. You lads wouldn't be jealous by any chance, would you? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. Well, I'm going to pretend that you did, and that you are. I find that wretchedly adorable. Or maybe just wretched. I don't know. Give it some thought, boys, and then let me know how you truly feel. Ta-ta! Oh, sounds like the Nor'easter's vanity rubbed off on her. As if we'd be jealous of that galloping blue sausage. I know. That'd mean we'd have to fancy her in the first place. Exactly. You don't, right? Did you really just ask me that? It was going to drive me balmy if I didn't. You balmy for asking in the first place. I know you haven't answered yet. Fine. No, I don't. I regard Lily as a sister, nothing more. Oh, that's a relief. I was worried for a second. Now it's my turn to ask. I'll save you the effort. My answer's the same as yours. Good. So we won't have a problem then. No chance. Fellas before fillies, any day. Too right. <laughs> Oh, hello Lily. 
You look like you're in a good mood. I am. Mostly because I just turned the tables on an attempted insult by Adam and Diesel. Do tell. I could use a laugh to lift my spirits. Why? Is something wrong? I just heard an emergency broadcast over the radio. There have been massive pogroms against Jews in Germany and Austria. Goodness, that's a bad sign. I knew the Nazis were always harsh towards Jews, but this is something else. Agreed. If they're now resorting to violence, how much longer before they lash out at the rest of the world? Cool. You know what our biggest mistake of the last war was? Not raising Berlin to the ground. Hard to argue with that. <sighs> As the days go by, it looks more and more like there'll be another war. Aye. I'll tell you what, if it doesn't happen, I'll paint myself blue. But enough doom and gloom. Tell me about your little comeback. Well, you see... Come on, Lily. Get a move on. Oh, right. Sorry. I better dash. I'll tell you about it later. All right. Look forward to hearing about it. See you back at the sheds. Bye. Hi, Lily. How's your day been? Fine. Thank you, Colin. Yours? Pretty good. I heard you got Adam and Diesel earlier. You did? How? They didn't tell you, surely? No. One of the workers overheard your little chat and he told me. <laughs> you got them real good. They just make it so easy sometimes. Yes, they most certainly do. Oh, hi Rich. How's it going? Better than ever. You could light up the dogs with that smile. Why are you so happy, Rich? Because my wife is pregnant. Really? No wonder you're over the moon. Congratulations. This your first one? Oh, yes. We're already thinking up names. I have the perfect one for a boy. Nigel. Nigel? That's right. I'm naming him after Mr. Zorro. And so I should. He gave me this job when I was down on my luck. I owe him everything. I'm sure he'll love that. All right, enough about this. Lily, I understand you'll be taking out the next train. That's right. Are you my guard? I am. I'm loving this run already. You know, I've just thought of the perfect name if our child was a girl. Thank you, Rich. I don't get it. Oh, Colin, really? breaking right that's it I'm stopping oh goodness gracious what's going on back there give us a tick Lily and we'll find out come on Frank I don't believe it. Four sets of couplings completely destroyed. We won't be going any further tonight. <sighs> Richard better have a good reason for throwing on the brakes like that. Come on, Ted. He always does. Where is he? <sighs> I'll go look for him. Honestly, you want something done properly, never get a Welshman to. What? Oh, that's just tops. What's wrong, Ted? Our flipping brake van is gone. It must have broken loose somewhere down the line. Come on, we better go find it. 
As someone who's lost part of a train before, I can imagine just how frustrated Lily was as she backed down along the branch in search of her wayward brake van. What I can't imagine is the sheer confusion she must have felt when she didn't find it. Stopping at various signal boxes and stations, the staff therein swore up and down that they had seen her pass with the van still attached to her train. She even made it all the way back to Brendam without finding it. And after a thorough search was conducted, the mystery only deepened. But that's impossible! I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't know what to tell you. We've searched up and down the docks, and your brake van isn't here. How do you just lose a brake van? I didn't lose it, Diesel. It went missing. That's not much of a difference. Wait a moment! What? What was applying the brakes to your train if your van was gone? Uh, I don't know. You didn't have any non-faceless trucks on your train, did you? No, I didn't. Alright, that's a wee bit disconcerting. So is the fact that Rich is missing alongside the van. Oh aye, I hope he's alright. So do I. <sighs> Where is he? My, my! What a fantastic day we have here! What in blazes? Maybe I spoke too soon! Good grief! What is all this? And where did it come from? I don't know, but we'll have to tell the vicar. He's not gonna like this. Goodness! Who could have done this? Hoodlums! with no respect and even less self-control. But to strike here? Children play in these fields. If they had any sense of decency, Vicar, they wouldn't have thought once about doing this. Don't worry, we'll use all our resources to find these scoundrels and bring them to justice. Sarge, come here, quick! Oh no, what is it? What's wrong? I'm sorry to say, Vicar, but we need your services. Good Lord! I'm sorry to say that the body found amidst the wreckage was that of the Midi's missing guard, Richard Payton. Naturally, they were mortified and saddened when they heard about it, as were we and the rest of the island. I understand there was little solace to be had at the poor man's funeral, it's no wonder why. There were just too many questions surrounding his death. This mystery made it perfect fodder for the newspapers. The incident became a media sensation. Its grim details reported and talked about endlessly in every part of the country. This coverage is undoubtedly the reason why Britain's top criminal investigative minds were tasked with solving the matter. But despite their best efforts, they wouldn't. To this day, the case remains open. Another enduring aspect of that incident is Rich's cause of death remains unknown. Did you lads hear the news? The coppers have called off the investigation. Hardly surprising. What else can they do when they're clueless? Come on, James. That's not a fair thing to say. I didn't mean that in a derogatory way, Thomas. I meant... What else can they do when they've exhausted every investigatory avenue? Blimey! Given the baffling nature of the entire crime, I doubt even Sherlock Holmes would have solved it. You do have a point, James. I mean, how does someone steal a brake van from a moving train, burn it, and then dump its remains in a field alongside its guard? All within the space of a single night, I might add. If you listen to some of the workers... They've got a lot of theories on the matter, and none of them are good. Like what? How about you lads wait until I'm gone before you discuss that? Gone? Where are you going? I have to deliver some coal to Brendam, if you can believe it. No, I don't. Why you? I volunteered for the job. Mr. Starr said it was a request 
from Mr. Zorro. A gesture to help the middies given their recent loss. For once, I don't mind doing them a favour. Good on you, mate. Yeah, good on you, James. Make sure you got plenty of bootlaces for the job. <laughs> what? <sighs> you know, Thomas, sometimes I really hate you. I know. <laughs> I get no rest and no respect on this island. Fizzling fireboxes? Now how did that happen? Take it easy James, or you'll blow a piston. Well excuse me for being a little put out after Charlie threw on the brakes like that. He would have had a good reason for doing so. We'll go check and... Uh, are you seeing what I'm seeing, Andy? Uh, I don't know. Are you seeing... nothing? Ye... yes? What are you two banging on about? The... the brake van's gone. G gone You mean like... Oh no! Someone's coming! That someone was Peter, hauling behind him a very heavy goods train. From experience, I know how fast the Midi's number 15 can move. As he came flying around the bend, I'm sorry to say that he didn't see the obstruction in his path until it was too late. Though he braked with all his might, it wasn't enough to avoid a catastrophe. Oh no! Peter! Peter! Are you alright? Bust my buffers. He's hurt bad. His crew can't be any better. We need to call for help, and fast. Let's rush down the branch and... James! Look! What? <gasps> Dominic! It was him! It was his ghost! But, 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 but... How? I don't know. But he was responsible for what happened to my train, I'm sure of it. What exactly happened, James? There was this horrific wailing, then the sound of breaking wood, groaning metal, and the snapping of couplings. And now my brake van's missing, alongside its guard. Just like what happened to me. <sighs> Wherever your guard's gone, I hope he makes it back. So do I. He's getting married next month. I am pleased to say that James's guard, Charlie Green, would be found alive, but broken. Just like what happened to Lily, the charred remains of James's brake van were discovered in a field. Charlie himself was found roaming the grounds of the church across the street, where he had smashed out a few of its windows. Charlie was out of his mind, his sanity utterly destroyed by the ordeal he had undergone, the specifics of which would never be known, as Charlie would spend the rest of his life as a gibbering wreck in a mental institution. Peter also suffered harshly because of Dominic's presence and had to be sent to crew for repairs. Miraculously, his driver and fireman survived, albeit with serious injuries. After Mickey helped clear the line, James quickly returned to Napford and told us of his encounter. Given our past experience, we all believed him, as did much of the island. Amazingly, even the police believed our number five when he provided a statement about the crash. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything they could do because, to quote the chief inspector, how can we arrest a ghost? A fair question, it was nonetheless frustrating as it meant that once again, we would have to devise a solution to this supernatural problem. All right, Toby. Your advice helped us get rid of the last ghost. So what have you got? I think we first need to find out why Dominic has only started to appear now. 
Maybe it's the anniversary of his death or something. I don't think so. Why not? It can't be a coincidence that he's showing up after my little accident on the hill. You mean with Duck and the Brake Van? Aye, that's the one. Oh, nice. He comes to Sodor to help out and instead disturbs the spirit of a spiteful Brake Van. I'll be sure to thank the Great Western Git for that next time I see him. Don't start throwing blame, Diesel. It's not going to help. But you do raise a point about Dominic. Since he's actually lashing out at us, he's clearly more dangerous than Arthur was. All he really did was give us a good scare when you think about it. We're still left with the question of how to get rid of him. Maybe we can try reasoning with him. In a way, it did work last time. Reason with a ghost that's been attacking our trains? And what? Hope he doesn't turn us into flaming wrecks too? Do you have a better idea, Diesel? No? Then we may as well try it. Tonight, we'll head out in pairs and see if we can find Dominic. If you do, be as persuasive and calm as you can be. And do not try to provoke him. You don't need to tell us that, Toby. It's just not fair. Rich's child is going to have to grow up without him. And what happens when they're old enough to ask how their father died? What do you tell them? That he was murdered by a ghost? How can anyone be expected to handle that kind of truth? It's a dilemma to be sure. One that I sadly can't answer. <sighs> In a way, I hope we don't find Dominic. I don't trust myself not to say or do anything to that spiteful spectre. Well then, I shall have to do my best to keep him safe from you. <laughs> Thank you for listening, Gordon. Any time, my dear. Any time. I may hold you to that. All right, we better get moving. Douglas and James should be near the crossing at Wellsworth by now. I'm right behind you, my dear. Don't you fret. All right there, Redwood. No sign of Dominic, so I suppose. We just thought we'd take a moment, since this was where Peter crashed. Does anyone know how he's doing? Mr. Zara went with him to crew. With any luck, we should learn something in a day or two. It shouldn't have happened. It simply shouldn't. Well, if we find Dominic... That's it! That's the sound I heard! But how do we know... Douglas! By all the saints! Dominic, it is you! Yes, it is. And you killed me. I told you I was breaking apart. I asked you to stop. I begged you to stop. But no, you ignored my cries, and I paid the price for it. Now it's only fitting I return the favor. Now I will- Oh, shut it, you spiteful sod! Douglas, what are you doing? Giving this prat what he deserves. What I deserve? I didn't deserve to be smashed to kindling. And if you had come straight to me and demanded an apology, I would have given you one without a second's pause. But no, you saw fit to terrorize my friends and murder innocent men. You're as spiteful as you are in death as you were in life. And I don't regret what I did to you. <sighs> For that... You can expect a whole new kind of misery. So can you if you don't hire yourself back to hell. I promise, if you don't leave right now, I'll be happy to give you another thrashing. And if you think I can't touch you because you're a ghost, then don't move while I come charging at you. So what do you say? Leave and never return? Or stay and risk another hiding? It, 
Is that it? Uh, I think so. Well done, Douglas. Smashing good work. Indeed. Ripping performance. That may have been the bravest thing I've ever seen. Likewise. I didn't know you had that in you, Douglas. Me neither. I guess you never really know what you're capable of. And I'm pleased to say that thanks to Douglas's gumption, we never saw Dominic's ghost again. However, for a while thereafter, we did hear him. Every so often, the spiteful spectre would let out his haunting shriek, just to let us know he was still around. Eventually, that did stop. Perhaps because he decided it was no longer worth it, or perhaps because he finally moved on. I doubt we'll ever know. One thing that is known is the fallout from his spite. Peter suffered extensive damage from his crash, and the repairs would take months to complete. Since Mr. Zorro could ill afford to be without a dedicated goods engine, he was forced to turn to an unlikely source. But that is a story for another day.